So, all right. Apparently, I'm live right now. I'm listening to John Little. This is Ginger Cook. Now we got to figure out where the screen is so I can see my screen. So apparently, we're live, you guys. So I guess you can see me. I can't see me. So I look into my monitor. I see nothing. So good evening from Houston, Texas. And you're talking to Ginger Cook, who is going to do some great stuff today. This is our Back to Basic Monday. And I'm going to explain to you what we mean about that. I mean, if you're an acrylic painter, there's some basic stuff you got to have in your bag of tricks to make all the toys go, okay? So I'm going to just, these are this is what we call a Ginger Cookie Crumb Lesson. And I'm going to show you what we're going to paint today is part of these bananas. Now the entire lesson, just to give you a heads up so nobody gets upset, the entire lesson is free and it's going to be with the link. The entire one hour lesson is free. It's on my website. But what we're going to go over today in detail is how to be able to create something like this and really go over that because it's the it's what we call back to basics. It's what you have to have as an acrylic artist to be able to achieve these effects. Okay, so be of good cheer. The lesson is up on my site now. So, you know, you can um, you can get the entire lesson, but what you're going to get today is sort of like uh, extra stuff. Now, I'm just putting out a few little paints because we are going to do some painting, all right? I'm just putting out some colors, some cad red medium, some yellow oxide, some burnt umber, some dosnine purple, some burnt sienna, that kind of thing. And I want to just give a shout out to our moderator, John Little. Uh, happy uh, Labor Day, everybody, if you're in the States. And John is now in Houston. And he is, this is Burnt Sienna, by the way, he is in Studio A of our, our recording studios. He's in A, and I am in Studio B. We're not set up where he can be in the same studio with me, so I still have my little earphones connected to him like this via the phone. And when you have a question, he relates that to me. And then I relate it back to you. It's sort of an old-fashioned uh, communication, but, you know, we're not doing smoke signals, so that's something. All right, so here's, we want some little dozenine purple. These are colors that we use all the time, thalo blue, ultramarine blue, yellow, red, yellow oxide. This is not, this is a but back to basic palette. This is really simple. A little cad red medium. This is so burnt umber. Back to basic colors. And what we want to talk about is that when you're, when you're an acrylic painter, okay, this comes up all the time in that no two people have the same brushstroke. All right, no two people have the same brushstroke. There, we all could paint the same painting, and, and we do. And you, and you'll see variations of that. In fact, uh, one of my students wrote the, in the other day, and she said something about a painting she had done. It wasn't quite what she had wanted because it didn't look exactly like the one I wanted. The longer you paint, the more you're going to sort of zero in on your style. You really want to develop a recognizable style, just like, for instance, if you watch the movie The Voice, you know, the TV show The Voice, they always say it's it's nice if you can sing. That's everybody's happy with that, but they love it if you have something a little unique to in your song, in your voice. And you get that by learning a lot of techniques. And so you got to know this stuff, and then it's like developing handwriting. None of us write the same. You're not. We're not going to have the same brush strokes, but... The way we go about smudging paint on a canvas, that doesn't change, okay? Maybe how fast we put it on, how we mix the colors, the angle, and so forth, but the general feeling of how we're doing it. Now, for instance, in these bananas, you'll note that it has a very, very faded out background. It's dark around the corners. Uh, if you have been watching on YouTube, you'll notice that we've got another video with this coffee mug. That was sort of a back-to-basic coffee mug with the spoon. I taught you how to, you know, get up, use some tape. That's a really good one. Um, you may, uh, this same idea from this background is how we did this background with the Van Gogh, uh, Vincent Van Gogh carnations, different colors, same idea of the background. So these kinds of things are, are really important when we're doing, when, when, when you're, when we're developing our painting styles, okay? So, and then there's certain things that are unique to acrylics, certain things that are unique to acrylics. For instance, like, Here's an example, I think we used this the other day, of um, you know some pretty uh, oranges and yellows and stuff. Now, you'll notice that I have these nice same bright colors in here, okay? But what happens is that most people don't appreciate is that yellow only paints over white. But what we're able to do, now, uh, oil painters kind of get around it, they would have drawn these in and then painted the dark around the background. What I like to do 
is to paint a dark background, let it dry, and then go from there. And I like to build up layers of the paint. But I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the back-to-basic lessons we have at gingercooklive.gallery. We have a pile of back-to-basic lessons of things that you, you know, brushstrokes you need to know. Because when we get into these advanced, more advanced lessons, and I have them, uh, knowing how to do this is perfect. There's my little ripped canvas here. Here's uh, This is a Paramount 10-sheet uh, uh, canvas, and I'm just using this as an example canvas. Uh, like I say, we're not going to paint this entire thing tonight. The lesson will be on. If you can just run right over, though, to our website and finish it. But the first thing we want to do is get this back dark, back dark, back dark, dark background here. Okay, got it. Now, how are we going to go about doing that? Well, this is requiring mixing about three colors. Now, as I said, we've got white, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, cad yellow medium, yellow oxide, cad red medium, burnt umber, dazzling purple, burnt sienna. If that seems like a lot, we use these colors over and over again. If you like these little sheets of things, I've this is an Avery label thing. We I bought some Avery labels off of Amazon, and then we you know I think we get like three sets of these colors per sheet, and you just peel off the peel them off and stick them on the plate and then you can kind of know where your stuff is if you're interested in having a you know the link to that um you know if you email us if you go to the website and just uh, use the contact us and say uh, please send me the template for this we'll give you the number of the, where i got the avery labels on amazon probably could get them at walmart office supply store and we'll give you those um uh the little what we call what do you call this john a template PDF template, and, and if there's an extra color you use, for instance, I've got Australian Sienna and Magenta, but maybe there's a color you use, you can certainly retype in something, but this will give you the idea. All right, so that being said, let's, let's start by mixing a dark color. And what we want to do is start with burnt umber, because that's our darkest color, and I'm going to just pull some into the middle of the canvas. People say, I don't understand how much paint you use. This was a question that came up. How much paint you use? Start a little tiny bit, get your color, and then make more. Understand how you made it. Now we're going to take a little bit of dazzling purple. Let me just zoom in. I want to show you that. Let me zoom in. Just really see it. Just get this close. A little bit of dazzling purple right there like that. Move that into there. A little tiny bit of ultramarine blue like that. Not too much. Move that in. That is a very, very dark color. Now, you'll notice I'm not using black. Some people use black. And but when we're when you're talking about these colors as an impressionist colorist, I don't use black. But if you here's our grayscale. So the darkest color on the grayscale is black, and you can see that this color I made is darker than the one next to it. You see, this is almost as black. It's about as dark as we get. So what what we do first, and this is really important, is understand one of the back to basic things you've got to know is layering. You can just write that down. It's layering. And you've got to layer. So let me just um, zoom back out for a minute. Okay, so that's layering. And the first layer is is put on with a fairly large brush. I'm going to just, uh, if you start with a damp brush, which is okay, you can start with a damp brush, but if you're starting with a damp brush, then what I want you to do is to wipe it off on a paper, ta on a, on a paper towel or a, a terry cloth rag. Get a big glob of it like this. Maybe just kind of mess it around like this. Now I'm just going to go sideways like this and smear this on. This isn't tricky. Um, that's all the water I'm going to use. I don't want a lot of water on this. I want to cover the canvas. Kind of In this case, I'm almost going at a diagonal. I could go down and across also, but I'm kind of scraping it up high piles and moving them somewhere. And you see this is a 6 by 8 canvas. That little bit got about half of that. Now if you understand how you're making the color, then it's easy enough to even use your brush and make a little more color. So how would I do that? Well, I'd grab a little bit of burnt umber, a little dusting purple, tiny bit of the blue, come in here like that and kind of mix it, almost mix it on the canvas and move it over here. And if I add more blue, it's going to be a little bit darker. And, you know, people say, well, how much blue did you use? Or how much? Play with it. Get a, get a sense. You, words... <laughs> Words don't teach. You've got to just kind of play with it. It's mostly burnt umber with about, um, you know, 2 to 5% of blue and, 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 and maybe 2 to 5% purple to get it this dark color. Then that's, that's what I've painted it. Now, once I've done this, I'm going to kind of smooth it out a bit, make sure I don't have any high spots, which is the purpose of all this, and I've covered the edges, okay? 
That is absolutely the purpose of this. Now, what what happens with this? Well, this has to dry. And when we're talking about talking about holding a hair dryer fairly close to this is a basic thing. Understand that you need some sort of color on here, and we're going to dry that. And it's going to take about three minutes to dry. And before we dry it, I will answer some questions. John, do we have any before we hit the hair dryer? Okay, so those questions, here's the hair dryer. I'm going to turn it on on high heat. John's going to mute the sound, so don't panic if you don't hear anything. And uh, here we go. We're going to turn it on. One, two, three. All right. So here's what you've got to know is that I hit this with a little cold air afterwards to make sure that it was dry. Usually if it's dull, it's dry, but if it's, it usually paints wet when it's shiny, when it's wet. But just in case, you know, touch it. You know, it's okay. It's all right to get paint on your fingers. It washes off. It is not the end of the world. I love those TV uh, painters, you know, the ones that uh, do, do stuff. They always look so perfect with their clothes and nothing. They quick pause everything and wash their hands. Oh, please. Come on. Let's, let's get into the paint, okay? Let's have a little fun with this. All right, so now my next thing is that you're going, well, that's interesting. Now what? Well, this is what you may not know, but we got to do this again. This is back to basics. People sometimes on a background like this, to get a background, a really effective background, we need to put another layer of this on here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take the, the you know my burnt umber, a little purple, a little bit of that blue, mix it together with my brush. Now I'm going to come up here on the sides like this and I want the darker sides of this canvas I want the sides of this canvas to be darker it's very effective in a still life because it forces your eye in toward the center if you think of the still life as sort of a portrait what we've done is we've done a portrait of some bananas okay so I'm going to come around the outside edges like this and I'm going to make sure I have enough paint keep grabbing paint and I'm just going to come around toward the center now this is a little piece of canvas. Now here's the deal. If you were like my friend Giovanna in Italy, she does these great big things. So I wouldn't go all the way around the canvas then. I would just do it in one area and then work in one spot. But I can work around the whole thing because this is six inches by eight inches. Um, so now I've got that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna, that burns my brush, and I'm going to come up here in the center like this. And then what I want to do is I'm going to use the side of my brush and barely touch it, barely touch it, and blend that burnt sienna into those edges that I just did, those wet edges. This is my first foray into that, and you can barely see it. Okay, so here's a little more paint. Now, if you get a lot of paint, this doesn't blend very well. Okay, so let's zoom in so you can really see this. This is going to really zoom in. Now, there's a, quite a bit of a glob of paint there. So I might pick some up and wipe off using just the side of this brush. This is this is a ruby satin silver number eight, and these are the my idea of a, a, a perfect acrylic brush. These ruby satin silver brushes, and a lot of times people say I just can't get your technique. If you're using a very soft brush, you will not get this technique. Okay, so you see how we're just kind of going back and forth on the side there and blending that in. Now, what you have to be careful of, and it's hard to tell, so you get a little bit, you're not getting, it's not real light. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of Cad Red Medium. Maybe just do this, okay? Then I'll wipe the brush off, and then using the side of my brush very gently now, almost like this is sunburn, I'm barely touching it. I'm going to add some of this redder color into here, barely touching it. I want you to think of mist, smoke, mirrors, clouds, something, but very light, very gently. I want to put this as my next color in here, like this. And if you keep going over it too much, you'll dig a hole. And not unlike tires and mud, 
that are just spinning, you'll start creating a hole in this paint, and you don't want to. So you want to just flatten this out. Now, where most people, this is a back to basic beginning thing here. Most people, I need it lighter than that. It's, it's too dark. Look at the difference. It's too dark. I want it lighter. We have to stop and dry it. This is key. This is, acrylic is all about layering. So we're going to take another minute and dry all this, all right? So let's take it, and do we have any questions before I dry? Okay, okay. Well, the back, the colors were, what did I use for the background colors? Now, here's our plate of colors. It's titanium white, thalo blue, ultramarine blue, cad yellow, medium, yellow oxide, cad red medium, burnt umber, dazzling purple, and burnt sienna. So I took about 75% burnt umber, a little purple, about 2% uh, uh, ultramarine blue, and I made that dark color. Okay, that's how I made it. Now we're going to go ahead and, and the reason I use this ruler is to A, to hold it down so this doesn't blow up, and also to force the air back on the canvas. Ideally speaking, a big piece of cardboard would force more air back, wouldn't it, than this little ruler? But, you know, just saying, that's what, this just speeds up the drawing time, okay? One, two, three, dry. So that's pretty dry now. Okay, now if I want this lighter than this, I mean, when I'm talking about this, here's the picture. Now you see it's it's almost there, but I want it a little brighter. I would have to change colors. So if my brush has been in water, what I would have to do, pinch it off, and then I'd have to make a kind of a bright orange color. So I'm going to come up with a little cad yellow medium like this, tiny bit of cad red medium, and I've got a pretty bright orange color. That's nice. I like that. Now, I'm going to just watch what happens. I'm going to just tap a little bit of this around here like this and then wipe the brush off. And using just the side of my brush, uh, maybe even the flat of it, I'm going to just start lightening this up. And I think I need a little more paint because that's not quite enough. Let's take a little bit more. I think I didn't get enough paint here. You have to have enough paint for this to work. Okay, so now what happens, you're doing this and you're lightening it up. But I don't want a big, like a round watermelon circle in the middle of here. So then what do you do? How do you, how, what do you do about this? Well, it depends on how dry this is. Sometimes you can just do some very light pressure and kind of blend this off to the outside like that. And we'll come around here like this and add some more color in like this and using just the side of the brush like that. Maybe put a little yellow and uh, because I want this a little bit brighter. If I get too much, I can take a little bit of burnt sienna and tone that down. That's easy enough to add a little bit of burnt sienna over that. Do you see? A little burnt sienna will tone that down just a hair. Making, I'm now using the flat of my brush and making little circles. And then lifting up very light as I come out this way. And I, I like that, so I'll just take a little more burnt sienna. Here's our, see it's a little lighter this time, a little bit of orange color, like that. There we go, so we're going to lighten this up. Now what happens is, you can have this as light or as dark as you want. But you don't, you want it to kind of blend into these other colors, all right? So you can go back and take a little of your dark color, like this, and then melt these edges together with the dark color. Just go back to your dark, kind of go over these edges and make, and make, make it sort of disappear. Does that make sense? Just make it disappear. Use the side of your brush, barely touch it, and just kind of, and try to avoid circles, like a big oval watermelon circle. Try to get this shape in here this sort of bright, pretty colored shape. Try to get this um, to be a little bit more interesting. You know, not so, it's not so perfect. Here's a little bit of yellow with that. I'm just saying, you can go, I can make this even lighter than I had it over here with the bananas. A lot of this is personal preference. If Again, if I got too much, here's the dark paint right here on the edges. Barely touch it, melt those together. See how it just sort of made these edges sort of bleed one into another? And you can dry and paint... You can, excuse me, uh, the question was, do I ever use a blending brush? Was that the question, John? 
Um, well, I don't know what a blending brush would be. This is my blending brush. So the question was, do I ever use a blending brush? This is how I'm blending. I don't, you know, this is how I'm blending. It's wet on wet technique like this. A round brush works too. A round brush is very effective on large canvases. You can use a round brush, sort of meant for that. But you can see how we've got these light colors. Now here's, I just want to show you what happens if you introduce another color. Here's some yellow oxide. Now that's a totally different color, isn't it? Wipe off most of it, go around the edges like this, and blend that out. You see what I'm saying? You can blend in other colors, and as you dry as you go, like for instance, maybe I want some yellow oxide over here. I'm just saying, maybe I do, I don't know. But as you, as you do this, just know that when you put in the other colors, you can come back with your darker colors and smudge out the edge so that they all sort of just one melts into another, it's not so perfect. Now we kind of have a banana in here anyway. And then once you do this, if you need to come back and lighten up a certain area, say near a banana, you can come back with a small brush and keep adding to this. But this is a very good background for something like this. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to dry this one more time. And I'm going to show you um, how to just do one banana. I want you to see what, what I'm interested in is back to basic lesson, since the whole lesson is... You know, I've given that to you. Just run over to the website and get the entire lesson of putting the bananas on. And I'll show you. Have a little sketch like, like this. this. is how I sketched in my little bananas, okay? But I want to show you that what I want to work on on our live class is I want to show you exactly how you blend, how you get this, this these colors, okay? That to me is important. That's a back to basic. Because if you can't do this, if you don't have the right tools to do this, and then you're feeling like somehow you failed, and sometimes it's your brush, sometimes you just don't know how, how much pressure to put, when to quit painting, when to dry it. Because if you, trust me, if you keep going over wet areas, you'll start making holes. So it's important to, I'd, I'd rather keep drying and layering than, than, than keep adding wet paint and then end up with a hole or something I didn't like. So all right, so we're going to take one more minute here, and we're going to dry the dry this, all right? We're going to dry this background. And the reason I'm not worried about all this is going to be banana, so I don't really care. If this was something else, I might continue this orange over or dry it and bring the orange over, okay? So, all right. John, any questions before I hit the hairdryer? Okay. So this is kind of fun. I mean, I think that this is, learning how to do this is is really important. Let's see, I've already got white paint on there, but that's okay. I know where the dark paint is. Okay, so see, I don't even know where it is. You want to know where it is? It's right here. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, there you go. Dark paint. Okay. All right, now I'm going to hit the hair dryer. One, two, three, dry. So what I'm going to suggest you guys do, if, you, if you're going to go ahead and you intend to do the whole lesson, humor me. Just do what I'm doing, and then you can uh, come back and add more bananas, okay? We're going to just put in one banana now because I want to show you how we're going to do that. We're just going to draw in one banana like this. We're just going to come in here like this. In the, in the complete lesson, I give you all the measurements, but I, this is a pretty easy shape. I mean, you have to admit this. We've got the little stem coming up here, and then you've got a little banana it's kind of round on this side, and we're using a little chalk, and it's coming like this. And maybe I'll just say that there's one here too, just just for the fun of it. Let's just maybe we'll just do two bananas just for the sake of it, because I want to I want to demonstrate a point here of something I'm trying to say here. And here's the top of this, okay? A couple of bananas. This is not too too tricky, okay? But again, I have the exact measurements on my website if you if you want it when you come back, and it's a free lesson. You just go over to free lessons under the tab because I wanted this to be available for everybody back to basics because it's hard when you're trying to do all the downloadable lessons and stuff we have on Ginger Cook Live. Knowing how to do certain brush strokes will help you a lot, okay? And, you know, if I were to still paint this, there would be a 
banana right here, and I guess there's one up here like, like this, like this, but we're not going to put them in. I'm just going to just show you this bit. There you go. Here's this, here's this little banana up here like that. Okay, so we've got some bananas, okay? Now, what most people do, and this is what just does them in, is they want to paint this, and they take the yellow, because they know they've got a yellow banana, and they come up here like this, they're painting yellow, and if they don't get the results, it sort of paints yellow, but it doesn't really, because you're painting over, you're not painting, yellow only paints over white. So let me just show you, let's just zoom in and I can see it. So you're not getting this bright color because the yellow doesn't paint. So what you have to do is you have to take the white paint and go ahead and just paint your bananas white. You can have a little yellow in it if you want, like a tiny bit. That's okay. It's got to be like 99% white. Now, when you're painting this, I'm not going up and down like this. I'm following the shape of the banana. Do you see that? Now, one of the things I will tell you, it's a must-have, is this is a quarter-inch angle ruby satin brush. This is the best this is one of the best brushes I've ever used in my entire life, and if you want a lot of control, this is it. And one of the things I see is that, see people holding the brush way back here. Crawl your finger up on it, grab this. Make sure you're holding the, the metal part. And now come up, see, and then it's a wrist motion, see? Wrist motion, see my wrist motion? So now when I'm saying it, and I, I always start in the sort of the middle of the banana, or the middle of whatever I'm painting, and then I expand. Everybody wants to outline it, like it's a pencil drawing. If this is what they did, then they want to outline it and fill it in. Don't do that. And, and why not? Why not do that? Well, the reason I don't want you to do that is because maybe as you're expanding the banana shape, as you start to see that this this shape fill in, you not as, you've got a better shape than the one you drew. Let's put it that way. Maybe there's a better shape than the one you drew. Now, I want you to notice how much paint I'm using. This is titanium white. Every few minutes I'm getting a little more paint. And I'm, how much am I scooping up? A little blob like that, okay? And I'm starting in the middle and I'm spreading this around. And then as I come to the tip, I'm using this little angle brush. Now, okay, so now I can then just on an edge, because you can use these like a knife blade, coming like this. And now I'll expand out. Because remember, chalk, chalk will wipe off when everything's dry. So now I will expand this banana out a little bit. Say so here's my here's my banana and I'm smoothing this all out and I don't quite have it up here, the shape up here, quite the shape I want. So now I can start reshaping this. Don't be afraid to spin something around if you need to reshape it. That's not a terrible idea. Okay, decide whether something's an any or outy shape. Okay. And let's see, we're kind of coming up in here like this, and then there's the back of this was sort of interesting, too, where the, these all come together. Now, and so technically, what we would want to do is paint in all the bananas white. Now, what do you do when there's one that maybe is close to another and you want to, be, you want to make sure you can tell? Well, you can take some white paint if you want and add a little, say, yellow oxide because you know it's going to be a little browner down here like this. And you might say that this, this, where this banana is touching this one, okay, that there's the, it's a little bit darker down here, like that, a little bit, just a teeny bit. Now I would wipe my brush off and just go right into the white paint, because the top of this I want to be as light as can be, so I want it white. I want to paint over white. So then the question gets asked, well, why didn't you just leave it white to begin with. I like the way these backgrounds work, and I like the f to have the full experience of all the blending of the colors on the background. And so uh, this for me, the more paint you have, the better. The more layers, and it looks, looks um, it quits looking like a coloring book and more like a painting. Okay, I always say that to people. Sometimes People will paint something and it looks a little bit like a coloring book, not too much like a painting. All right, so we're just going to focus on these two bananas. Here's the whole picture like that. And again, go to gingercooklive.gallery 
And this is a free lesson under free lessons. There's a, we have a tab that says free lessons. It's really easy. And it'll be right there, back to basics, bananas. So because we really want everybody to get this. This is important stuff. Now, what happens now? Well, then people want to put the colors in. No, you don't want to put the colors in. I might take a little bit of water on my brush, wipe it off, and then just maybe smooth something out a bit. Teeny bit of water on the brush if I have to, to maybe smooth one of these out. And this is working successfully. Why? Because I dried it. And if I see a little hole, I might fix that very gently. Not a lot of pressure. I'm not pushing hard. Now I have to really dry this. You could just go have some ice cream or something and come back. Or you can take a hair dryer and dry it. It's okay. But we're going to dry this. And that's one of the things that people just don't do enough of is drying. Um, we're going to take a hair dryer and dry that, and I'll answer some questions. I'm just going to give you an idea. Some of the back to basics that we have on gingercooklive.gallery, we suggest it. Whether you're nine, you know, whether you've signed up for just seven days, you, you know, or you know, you, you're an advanced painter and you're just signing up for, you know, for the monthly subscriptions, or whether you just started, doesn't really matter. These, if you learn these acrylic techniques, at least watch the videos. Watch the videos of how we do it. We have a, some koi fish. Uh, this is one of my favorites where I show you how to use the mixing white to get these effects, how to blend. Uh, this is absolutely a must and back to basics on our website. This is done with a palette knife. This is done with a brush. We show you how to blend. Learning how to blend all makes such a difference. Um, let's see. I think I've got another, another koi fish, which was very, you know, it's a back to basics. And, for instance, we show you how to do you know, raindrops, things like that. So those are a bit, we have a whole plethora of back to basic uh, videos that if you, even if you just don't do every one, if you just watch them, you're going to get so much out of it. People always say, well, I don't understand why this penguin is a back to basics. Well, what we're showing you is a little bit more blending with different colors, how to do that, how to get a blended background, how to do, add a little more detail and layering. So all this makes a difference when you're trying to do the more complicated stuff. Okay, I think we're pretty good, John. Any questions before I start to um, um, to dry it? Okay. Uh, somebody asked me what kind of chalk I used. I use something called New Pastel, and I use a light color. But I'll, the other chalk I like is uh, this is a general uh, char white charcoal pencil. And I like that really well because I can sharpen those. The best one, which I don't have a sharpener for, and I need a sharp knife or something. Maybe John can sharpen these for me now he's down here. But there are problems. These Conte, white Conte pencils from uh, from Paris. I love the really wonderful white chalk pencils. But they're a little, for me, they're a little challenging to sharpen. But um, that not, might not be for you. For instance, if, you, if you're one of these you know people that has, every time you buy cosmetics, you get a little pencil sharpener with it. Um, there, you may have one in your drawer somewhere that will fit that. It didn't go in my, that other one didn't go in my regular pencil sharpener. And of course I have a little box of these new pastels. I buy, I just buy the, you know, the light brown one, the, you know, white one, something like that, gray, like that. That's the chalk I use. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to dry this one more before I dry. No. Yeah. So the question is, what do you think of canvases that have a backing? I'm think, thinking, um, for instance, uh, sometimes you'll see canvas on a canvas board. Canvas board, it's like canvas and it's glued to a piece of cardboard. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive. And when you're, that's a good question, because if you're in a, gal in a situation where you're wanting to get to the point, and a lot of our students are, where they're wanting to get to the point where they want to sell something, you know, not just happy, but they want to sell something, okay? Then I would say that a, a, a cardboard canvas panel probably isn't what you want to put your paintings on. When you're learning, I guess it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to get something on there. This is a regular stretch canvas. This is our hotel series. This video is up on YouTube. And you see it's, it's you see the little wood canvas, it's like an inch and a half wide, and you'll see some gallery wrap canvases, which means they wrap the canvas all the way around the edges and staple on the back. Some of these are not as wide as this, but this is what we would call a stretch canvas on a wood stretcher bar, okay? And incidentally, we came up with some really cute new, um, we came up with a new one the other day, didn't I, John, on that, um, 
village piece. Oh yeah, I, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, this bicycle's coming soon too. Ooh, all right, had to show you that. Those of you who are collecting the bicycles, but that that's not coming before the uh, bookshop and the uh, the bookshop and the cafe. Those are the two next ones to be released. We just have to finish filming the John's here now, so I have to finish filming the bookshop. Hopefully, we can get this this released out pretty quick. These will be our next set. So in our bicycle, in our on our little village series, but these are all done. We recommend, even though I did these on flat canvases, we recommend that you do these on a stretch canvas. So I would say that canvas board, and I've got a lot of paintings on canvas board, I do. And I'd say that they're good for practice, or you can frame them and keep them for yourself. But if you're framing something, I would go for stretch canvas. Okay, I mean, if you're, um, you know, trying to sell it, that, that would be my, you know, I would, and, and boy, people really love the, you know, people say, well, should I buy cotton or linen? Well, it really sounds snotty to say acrylic on linen sounds really classy. Oh, well, this artist only paints on linen. It's a good selling point in the gallery. Though, though linen t tends to be a little more money, linen canvas. But it's nice. All right, so we're going to um, dry this. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty, that's a little tacky right there. Let me dry that. You've got to dry this. The thicker the paint gets, the more you have to dry it. Okay, so now let's just zoom in and really focus on how we're going to Get some blended looks on this. This is this is key. And if you have questions, if you don't understand what I did, now is the time to ask. I have no idea if you know what you know what you understand or don't understand because you're there and I'm here. So I'm just guessing. So we're gonna. So if don't if there's, we don't consider it a stupid question. If you got a question, oh gosh, I can't write this. She'll think I'm dumb. No, I won't. I want you to know if it, you don't understand it, you ask. This is important. All right, so I started with a clean brush, and what I know is that I know that the, it's always a little darker under here than it is on the top of the banana. We've got the light kind of coming from this direction, okay? So I need to start with a darker yellow. So I'm going to start with a little yellow oxide, okay? And here's what, here's what you need to know in a back-to-basic lesson. Where is the... <laughs> here we go. Everybody saw it. We had it out here originally, right? Where did the... Um, Ah, here it is, the, uh, the wheel go, the color wheel. It's the color wheel. All right, so here you go, you guys, color wheel. Yellow is opposite. No, I don't tell you, everybody. What's yellow opposite? I'm not going to tell you. It's a secret. What is it? Purple. So anytime you need to push back a color, put the opposite of it, or what they call a compliment. Don't let the vocabulary scare you. Sometimes you start throwing words like that and people just shut down. I, I tertiary colors and complementary colors are all too, all too scary. Don't want to do that. No, no, we don't care. Purple is opposite yellow. So we're gonna we're talking about like pepper. If you're talking about seasoning in food, we're talking about pepper and not salt. So we're gonna take just a teeny amount, just on the tip of our brush, and add a little bit of that. Take a little goes a long way. Do you see that? And I'm gonna say that that's probably the darkest shadow color. I want on my banana like that. Am I zoomed in as much as it'll go? No, here we go. See that? Now, I'm going to come under here like this on the bottom of my banana. And I've got a I've made I've you know, made some paint with my brush like this. And I I know that it's going to be pretty dark coming in here like this. And then it's going to get lighter as it goes over. So I had some purple with that. What if I just took some yellow oxide, which is a little lighter than that? purpley brown color. Now what? I'm going to wipe the brush off and kind of doing a back and forth motion like this, I'm going to blend these two colors in a little bit. I know I want it just a touch darker on the bottom, so I have to put a little more purple there, and then I'll just take the side of my brush very gently, barely touch it, and blend that in. 
Now I'm going to take some white and cad yellow media, and I'm going to come up here, say here's the light part of my banana. Now this is where I lose people. What, we not, we're not going for striped high, so how do we get this side of the banana, <laughs> the dark side, and the light side? How, do we, how does the force conquer the dark side, okay? So take your brush, wipe it off, using that same little angle brush. Now back and forth on the seam, overlap the seam in sort of a back and forth diagonal motion like this. Color it in and just lighten that up like that. Okay, don't get down too far because you see how that sort of lightened it up like this? And you have to do little bits at a time because this is acrylic paint. It's drying faster than you can get away with doing this. Now let's take a little more white and yellow and come on up here again. Here again, so one more time, see? Now that this lighter because we're mixing basically on our canvas. Now I've wiped the paintbrush. Now just over this edge, barely touching it, I'm going to blend that in. See what I'm doing? See how I'm blending that in? I'm not going all the way down to the bottom, and I'm saying this top part is lighter. And now what I want you to do, and this isn't key, take a little squirter bottle, give yourself a little spot of, of just a few drops of water. Just a few drops of water. Because people say how much water you use, very little. Just a few drops, maybe a drop or two of water on your brush will help blend this and wake this up a bit. So you can come up here and maybe bring some of this color of the banana. See how I'm going? Because there's still paint in the brush. And if you don't think so, what you, I certainly hope you're washing your brushes in soap and water. I'm going to come on up here because I want this sort of lighter yellow. I'm going to just bring some cad yellow medium up this way and say that there's this lighter part of my banana right here. Do you see what I've just done? I know I want it a little bit lighter here on the tip. I haven't dried anything. A little bit of white. A little bit of cad yellow medium and kind of half and half. Here's the chip. Pinch the brush like this. This this seam, barely touch it. Blend that out. Don't go very far. Just smudge it out. You, you know, just smudge it out. If you took a Q-tip, maybe that would be easy for you. Take a Q-tip. Smudge it out. How about over here? Do we need to lighten it up right here? Lighten this little nifty spot right here. Okay, then just bring it back down like that and lighten it up. Now, at some point we have to dry this because it's not as effective, but at some point we need to dry that. But we know we've got a pretty good shadow here. Now, what about this one? Well, we would start the same way. We would start back here with this one and start with the shadow. Now, I'm going to add it. This one's a little bit darker, so I'm going to add some burnt sienna and yellow oxide. Let me show you the colors. Because that, this one's I've got this a little bit darker, okay? And I'm going to say, here's some burnt sienna and yellow oxide. I'm going to say, this this banana here has got a bit more shadow on it. But I'm going over, and that's separated the two here, like that. Okay, and I come up about that far. Now, again, white and yellow. Right up in here, a little bit of white, a little bit of cad yellow medium. Like that. Now we've got the striped tie. Now what are you going to do? Same idea. Wipe your brush off. Just take a rag, wipe it off. Now use the side of your brush like this. Wipe it. Come over here like this. Don't go all the way down to the corner because you're, you've made this slightly darker than you want it. You made this bottom color slightly darker than you actually wanted it. So that when you started blending it, it would it would this would melt. That's the key. You wanted this one slightly darker than you wanted. See, see how this is how beautifully this blends now. Okay, so the same idea. I want this a little lighter. Come up with a little bit of white and yellow. Say okay, like this up here on the top because I want the top part lighter. Pinch it off. Barely touch it and just come here. Maybe pick up the paint like this. And blend it. Don't get it over in your dark areas. Like that. Try not to get over in the dark areas. There you go. And if you need to come back and touch something up here, like for instance, under here on this side of the banana, right like this, you can come back right like this and suppose you just felt like it needed to be darker. Then pinch your brush, use the side of it, and blend this out. Do you see what I mean? Erase. What we're doing is we're erasing the seam. Maybe that helps you. It's the same motion you might use if you were racing something, but you're not pushing very hard.
Okay, so let me zoom back out now and let you kind of see what I'm talking about. See how we're kind of getting those bananas in. All right, and this is how you paint them in. Now, okay, so, uh, but what about the uh, what about the green? What we have to do for the green is dry it. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'll show you how to do the green. Do we have any questions while I'm waiting for the green? Okay, I have to tell you guys, it's been a great, we've had a great, John a little has moved to, from Michigan to Houston, and we've had a great, uh, he got here uh, late Wednesday, and he set up his computer. We're able to, in our studio, we're able to load our videos much faster. And then we had a great trip. Uh, we, Sunday we went over and saw my daughter Cinnamon, uh, the art, chir art heart chirpa, you guys know her. We went over and saw her, and uh, saw her uh, set up, and came back um, a, a, a few shekels lighter, but with some, some more in, more video equipment. They've upgraded, and uh, uh, we might be able to, at some point, when we get set up more, even shoot some full videos on much larger canvas and do some stuff. So, I mean, we've gotten, we now have the equipment to do it, which is kind of neat, and on some sort of monthly payment plan, because it's, you know, to get, to get it back to them. But we're excited that we even have the option to do that. So I love what we do here, but it's, I want to be able to do some full-length introductions and maybe even show you some full-length, big, giant paintings, and that could be coming in the future. So I'm very happy that John and Cinnamon were kind enough to um, let us buy their hand me downs as they keep expanding their fabulous operation over there. It's an impressive studio. Thus, John and I have Studio 1 and Studio 2 at our place. Okay, so I'm going to dry this. All right. And now John's here. I think uh, we actually have a shot of getting a newsletter out. We always have that on the um, on the website. Sign up for our newsletter. We haven't put one out since last Christmas. People think, man, I, I know I signed up. Maybe they just don't like me and never sent me a newsletter. We can send anybody one, but I write them, and they never get out. But now John assures me that they're getting out. We'll actually have some newsletters. And we have news, great news, fun things. So, okay, so we're talking about this green here. This is a back to basic. Back to basics. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Look at the green here. And look at the green in this cafe scene. Do you see this is a different green? All right. There's lots of different greens. And we don't, I do not recommend you ever buy green. I want you to learn to mix. I want you to know the difference between this green and this green and be able to make it. Okay. There's a lot of different greens. Now, let's see. I'm going to show you another hotel. All right, so now we're, this hotel, this green and this green are similar, okay? So when you learn how to make this, now you'll know how to make the hotel one, you know, with the little, um, or the little bookshop, because that's a similar, that's a similar green. And one of the things you have to know in a back to the basic lessons is how you get greens. Now, I have videos up on YouTube about green. I have that. And, but sometimes it just, if you just write it down. Okay, you started off with two, good. yeah, phthalo blue, green shade, and ultramarine blue, red shade. Those were the two colors that you had. And if you only owned one blue, if you could only afford one blue, I would tell you get phthalo blue, green shade, not if you were on a budget, because that's the one you want, because you can take phthalo blue and turn it into sort of this color. So how's are we going to start it out? We're going to take a little yellow like that, see that? And then a teeny bit, like kryptonite, you guys, like the least amount. And then look what happened. Look how bright this got. That is a bright green, isn't it? Now, this is this is the color of my ruler, see that? That's like circus green. So my ruler's got more yellow in it and maybe a little white, but that's like a circus green. So we're gonna take a tiny bit of burnt sienna, which it has a little red in it. Why are we gonna use red? Oh, come on, you guys. Just like purple is opposite yellow, red is opposite green on the color wheel. Just get a little color wheel. You don't have to memorize this stuff. Just look. It's like a chart. It's like a, it's like a cheater. It's a cheat. So if you are trying to dull green, like a tiny bit of red, like a minuscule amount of red, will dull green. We'll push it back a little bit, make it not so bright. So we're going to put a little in brown. That brown, burnt sienna is like a reddish brown. So that is a perfect color right there. Do you see how that just sort of gave it that more of an olive green, which is what we're going for. 
So what I need to do now, and I'm using this angle brush, and I'm going to zoom in again, going to get the zoomy stuff going. Okay, and I just can't say this enough. Zooming in, it's just getting these back to basics. Now, why you want an angle brush? Here's what you do. You don't have a big glob of paint anymore. We're through with the globbies. Now we're flattening it out, and we're just making sure that we have it on both sides of the brush, and it's fairly flat. All right, no big globs, and we're using the knife blade. Do you see that? The knife blade of it. Here's the flat blade, and here's the knife edge. We're using the knife edge. We're going to come up here because obviously this is a little skinnier here. Then I'm going to come down around here like this. I'm going to keep following this way, about this far. Now I'm going to use the wider um, edge. Now what? I've got a stripe again. But Ginger, we don't want stripes. No, we don't want stripes. Now what do you do? Wipe all the paint off the brush. Now, we don't have any paint over here, so how are we going to fix that? Well. Let's take a little yellow and put over here. Here's a little yellow oxide. Put over here. Now we've got two colors. Now let's blend these two together like that. Smudge that into that wet yellow paint. See what happened? And as we get over this way, I might even get into my little light bits of puddle over here and the little drop of water on the brush here. Now, as I do this, do you see how this blended? into that. And the more, here's the trick, the more paint you have, the easier this is. Not more paint on the brush, but the more paint you have dried on the canvas, the easier this gets. This is much easier here. Let's come down this way on the bottom of this, right like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to put a little water on my brush. Didn't wet that, and then wipe it off. And then this is a, almost like a glaze here. Okay, and then I'll come back with a little yellow, maybe a little white, a little yellow and white. Here, like that, pinch the brush, blend that out, blend that out, just like that. And a little tiny bit of, just a drop of water on the brush to kind of wake all this paint up and dry this. People say to use blending mediums, you don't need it. You know, you, you just don't need it. Do you see how we blend? Now, if I want it a little bit darker down here, I might take a little bit more blue to this green and a tiny bit of red make a darker green or even a burnt sienna. Okay, so let's just say I want it a little bit darker right there. Okay, a little bit darker right there. Wipe the brush. This is still wet. Now play with this a little bit. Okay, now pinch your brush. And then come up here. Sneak up here like this. Now what about this little bit right there? Just rinse your brush all the way off now. This is the secret. Rinse it off. Wipe it off on a rag, got a damp brush, and just very gently go over it. It's almost like mopping a floor. You're just going to pick up a little bit so this blends out back and forth like this and just blend this out. There's very little pressure to get this to happen. And if, it, if you're still not totally happy with it, you can bring a little yellow back if you wanted to. Pinch it and blend that out again. Okay? But this is how you get a little bit darker shade, then pinch, just put a little tiny paint, then p blend it, pinch, blend it, pinch, sideways a little bit like this. Let's say it's a little bit darker down here on the edge, okay? Now, I'm still a little, I'm a little brighter green in this one than I am here because I don't have enough brown in the, um, or, or red in the, in the, in the paint. So I can add, if I want to just dull that up a bit, I could, I would probably be better off to dry it before I change the blue color on this if I wanted to. So it's come up like this, and here's this green stem up here. And remember, you can dry it. You can dry it and then do this again. Just if it's, you're not having the blending experience that you were looking for, dry it and blend it again. The same thing with this one. I think I want it, I think I want my I want my stem yellow first like that. I want to make sure that this, this stem right here is pretty bright yellow. And then I'll come up with the green and just barely touch it and go over it, pinch it. And I can blend that right in as we're going, wet on wet. But this is a back to basic lesson. How do you get something blending wet on wet like that or dry paint? Now, if I wet my brush because I haven't rinsed it, I've still got paint on it. So I can bring just a, with a damp brush and a tiny bit of green, I can come on top of here like this and almost glaze over this, some of this yellow. 
like this. Go back and forth like this, pinch the brush, wipe up some like this. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. And unless you practice, it, it, it almost, I don't even think about it anymore. If one way isn't working, I try another way. Let me zoom back out and let you see what we're doing. Like that, okay? So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, you know, how we want to, you know, blend something out. And then I would come back in with the purple and cad red medium because what I know is that I need something real dark right in here like this between these two, um, you know, you know, bananas. I've got something really dark coming around here like this. And you know, I haven't, I'm not painting the top. I'll show you how we do that. Now, if you need to blend that out, I guess I'd better zoom in too. So, all right, so this is too much on this side. Rinse your brush, okay? Rinse your brush and then come here just on this edge and soften this. Just a little water on the brush, soften it so that it's not a hard line. Then pinch your brush if you need to and just bring it out a bit and soften that. So the hard line is next to the other banana and the right side of it is just sort of melted again into here like a little shadow and that's what you're talking about. And it's really um, as simple as that. I promise you it's as simple as that. A little bit of green, come back and melt it back. Pinch. Get in the habit of pinching your brush to do this. I'm going to bring that dark. I've still lost a little of that dark. I'm going to bring that back over here. And kind of melt that in there like that. All right, so there's that, there's that sort of shadow on the banana and the same here. Now what about this? What if you didn't like this? Well, you know how you made the background. Everybody remembers, right? We just made it a minute ago. Okay, so come back with your background color like this and blend it back out. Do you see what I just did? You can do, this is what we call a hard edge. Just come back with your background color and then blend it out like this, see? So you can go back and you can do some, you know, very uh, nice repairs. You can say, you know what, I want it a little bit darker under this, um, this right here, like that. And I want to just kind of, you can kind of, you know, reshape this right here like that. So I want a little bit darker there. And come under here, I could have either painted this down or come up under the bottom with a little bit, maybe a little cad red medium might be nice. Come right next to the bottom with this, with some cad red medium underneath here, and then blend this back into the background. But this blends really well now. This, I promise you, here's just put here cad red medium on my brush. Now look at that, and wipe it off, and then bring it back this way, and blend it into the background. And just smudge that out, like that. Okay, because once you have a background like this, you can really make some great repairs, um, you know, and, and, you know, fix a lot of stuff on your, on your fr fruit or whatever it is you're painting. So these are the basic brush strokes that I want you to have. Now I'm going to do one more light one here real quick. I'm going to show you, but we have to dry this. So any questions before I dry it? Show what? Okay, so the somebody asked me to show when I pinch my brush. I here's a rag, and then I'm doing this. I'm squeezing and pinching really hard like that, and I'm flattening that back out, and I'm always wiping. And if I have a rag underneath my water, and if I'm dipping it, say let's just pretend this is my water, okay? I dip it in the water, and then I do this on both sides. Always have a rag underneath your water, and then I have a rag in my lap all the time and I'm constantly doing this. So I rarely rinse the brush as much as I just sort of pinch it, okay? That's how I, that's how I pinch the brush. So let me dry this, and then I'm going to show you how to do another. We're going to come up with another light highlight. Let's just say I want it even lighter here on the banana. So now I'm going to go into white, mostly white with a little bit of yellow, and I'll come up here like this. All right, now I want it lighter right here. Let me just get titanium white now. I want it right, lighter right there. See that? 
Now this is just one way. Some people just do a brush stroke and they move on. But I want to, I'm going to, I'm pinching it now. See that? Now I'm going to take it this way and just fuzz out that light highlight like that. Just, I can still do, even though this is dry, I can do that. I can lighten, lighten that like that. So I want a little bit lighter there. And if I want this even blended more, I'll just take a little water on the brush and then very gently, barely touch it. Just soften that, okay? So it's possible, and then maybe I might just say I want a little bit of white right there, and that'll be the highlight. It doesn't all have to blend. They don't all, all the highlights don't have to blend. You can just have like a little highlight there and then just maybe soften it a bit, but they don't, again, they don't all have to blend. See that? And that's how you get these, you know, kind of little bright areas. Okay, like that, and see how, see, see, you can just see how we've got that nice highlight there, and then maybe right here, see, this is why I love this. Look at this. I'm going to show you this. This is so cool. This brush, you can go to the, uh, uh, let's see, I just put this out of focus. I, gosh, I thought I was, here, hang on a second. Let me focus our thing. I pushed the wrong button, John. This is me pushing the wrong button. This is Ginger pushing the wrong button. Here we go, focusing the camera here. Okay, so you have to, it has to have this neutral gray to focus. All right, now yeah, we, we got it. It's focused, right? Sorry, sorry, everybody, but that's okay. Um, look, there's a lot of buttons on here. One could push anything, honestly. There's a lot of buttons. Okay, sorry. <laughs> John says just like five, Ginger, how hard is this? Okay, well, we're all good at everything. Okay, so I've got a little bit of yellow on here. Now watch this. It's a knife blade. See that? I, I'm My little finger's bracing my hand here. I'm holding, look where my hand is on this brush. I'm just barely touching this like this, like that. Look at that thin line. Look at that. Is that not just cool as can be? That's what you can get with a brush like this. That you just, and you can get these, the brush guys have got a deal going where if you type in the Art Sherpa, that's Cinnamon's uh, uh, thing under the code, you get a discount and they're carrying these ruby satin silver brushes uh, uh, for us um, and you know which is I think just awfully nice I think it's really nice part of me wants to keep putting yellow here look I'm just going to dry brush a little yellow there uh, see a little highlight there on the banana so if you want to know where you can get these um, you know, different art stores have them I, I, um, I, we talk about them all the time some of our friends Victoria Snyder will tell you um, uh, Andrew will tell you in Haiti uh, I've, I've, I've Everybody that has written and tried these says, oh my gosh, you weren't kidding. Those are the best brushes I've ever used in my entire life, and they just are. And they don't pay me to say that, by the way. Nobody pays me to say any, say any of this. I don't get anything for saying this. But I want you to win. I want you to win. And have, It's like the difference between the, 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 the window squeegee thing you bought at the grocery store and the one the guy uses when he comes to your house. And you're sitting there trying to wash the windows, and he does it in seconds, and you think, I can't be that incompetent. Surely you can't be that hard to wash the windows. And he's doing whoop, 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 and the windows are washed, and you're going whoop, 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 and staring and streaking. And then you get out the Windex and the newspapers, and you're thinking, why on earth do I want to wash windows? Do I even care? And it's the tools. Have good tools. A little brush like this probably, somebody says, well, how much is a little brush like this? They're under 10 bucks. Under ten dollars. What's what's your aggravation worth? You know, honestly. And again, speaking of under ten dollars for nine ninety five, you can become a member of GingerCookLive.gallery for just seven days and try all kinds of our back to basic lessons plus all this other stuff. And remember, go to the website to finish this. Go to our website, GingerCookLive.gallery. Here's the specific instructions. Up in the upper tab, there's things that say lessons, and then there's, well, we have a tab that says free lessons. Hit free lessons and look for the bananas. And that will, when we have the complete lesson, I filmed it all by itself because I think sometimes people have felt the live lessons are a little distracting because we get kind of off on tangents and telling stories, and this is a just total focus. So if you got this far, then you can add the other bananas and um, or just do it do it again and enjoy just go bananas on our website it's great fun so john any questions this was a great class i think we did pretty good here for an hour what do you guys think it's supposed to be a 20 minute deal hmm huh yeah all right so we're still close so well, it's 8 30 for me or 7 30 
We're not. We're almost closed. We're half an hour away. And also, we've got some new downloadable lessons. If you guys, we have regular lessons, but you can also download lessons. And if you haven't seen it, you know, we have over 20 lessons you can download and own forever if you're one of these people that like to own your own library of stuff. I want to mention that, too. That's kind of important. And guess what we're painting? This week we were painting the Puffins. That's our, um, our weekly picture. Every week, every Thursday, our members get a brand new lesson. And we have over 180 lessons on there now. That's this week. And then, let's see, I put something. Oh, yeah, next week. Next Thursday now, which isn't that far away. It's like in three days. Tuscan Sunrise, that will be the the, the, uh, the the featured lesson of the week. And then, Stanley, that's done on canvas board, okay? So, I mean, I use it. It's okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's fine to paint on. I'm just saying if you're trying to, if you're trying to show in a gallery, maybe that wouldn't be what you'd want to use. And But it's okay for practicing. And then we've got some other great stuff coming up, too. And... Um, our meditation piece, which I'm crazy about. Have you guys seen this one? You seen our meditation piece? Let me grab that because I have that. I've got to connect to. Um, let's see. I, I have to bring my phone with me. I'm connected here somehow. Let me grab that. Where's our meditation piece? in front of me. Put, put that silly John. Why would it be in front of me when I'd have to turn around and look for it? Oh, I don't know. It was in front of me. It's not now. I don't know. It's not in front of me now. There's no meditation piece in front of me, John. I lied. There's none. We had a meditation piece. Wow, I don't know. What happened to it? Well, I'll show it to you tomorrow. We're going to be live tomorrow night at 7.30. What are we painting then? Oh, gosh. What are we painting tomorrow night at 7.30? I can show you if I can find it. Here she goes. Where, I had it out, I promise you. I'm organized. I'm organized. Not so much, but in, in, in my heart I'm organized. Because you saw, we got all this stuff together. Where was the stuff for tomorrow night? He says he doesn't know. Um, this was a back-to-basic lesson. Isn't that cool? How to blend. Put that up on YouTube, too. Back-to-basics. Where's our stuff? We're doing something absolutely nifty cool tomorrow night. Well, we're doing a sunset. You'll have to tune in and see. I'll post it up on Facebook so you can see, because I don't know. Did I hide it under here? Yeah, no. I don't know where I put the meditation stuff either. And this is a, Studio One's really small. You'd think I had its giant studio. Some of it's got a huge studio. Studio Two's pretty big where John is. This is pretty small. Well, we don't know. We don't know. But nonetheless, it's a sunset. We're doing a sunset live, the whole thing tomorrow night on YouTube. We're doing the whole thing tomorrow night on YouTube. You just be ready because we're going to do the whole thing at uh, sunset on a 6x8 canvas. So there, we'll put the puffins away. Here's our bananas. Please go to gingercooklive.gallery. Visit our website to get the entire free lesson. And I will finish off by answering any questions that you might have. All right, we're covered. So does everybody kind of get what we're doing now, right? And I hope, I hope you try this. I hope you try practicing these blending techniques because this will just save you. It doesn't matter how you, and you get your handwriting, your own personal handwriting style of painting going. No matter how you do that, you're going to really appreciate having that. And I think I, where did I put that? I really want to show you tomorrow night's lesson, John. I really want to show them that. But, um, when we have all these piles of lessons, things get kind of stuck and hidden inside one lesson or another. Who knows what happens to them. Ah, here it is. I found it. Okay, this is tomorrow night. Our sunset. Ooh, is that cool? This is what we're doing tomorrow night. Um, and We're going to be doing this sunset tomorrow night. Very simple sunset. I'm going to show you how to do some current, some blending, this kind of stuff. So that's tomorrow night. Get ready to paint that. This is tonight's, and I'm glad I showed it to you. So super happy, you know, Labor Day, you guys. This is Labor Day, right, John? It's the, still is.